This is an absolute game changer. So USB-C, OSD, 9 volt, DJI ready. You break your DJI, you can go analog and have a 9 volt. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be checking out a couple new products that I found to be interesting and I haven't checked in a while and I've also been gone for quite a while. I've had the previous video scheduled and um, I just recently got back. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. There's also a couple things that have been going on, for example, the Fat Shark and some other things as well. Now, my previous comments on Fat Shark where I had my own opinion, um, Fat Shark didn't like it. Well, I don't want to say Fat Shark didn't like it, but the guy in charge of the Fat Shark channel just couldn't take an opinion. And I think the, the, the reply was very childish, to be honest. So first on the list is this Geb RC stack. I still haven't received any of their stacks, but this one I'm planning on picking up right now because it looks pretty interesting. Um, I don't like the overall execution, but the overall features it has seems to be pretty great for $100. But obviously we can also get roughly around the same things for cheaper, but this seems pretty cool here. Now let's go down and see what's really unique about this. Well, right now what they have is it has Bluetooth. It's an F722, so it's the baby F7 with less RAM, but that's totally fine or less memory. And it doesn't really matter that much. And uh, it's rocking two ICM gyros. So it's a dual gyro, but it's the sensor fusion. So it takes from both gyros here. It's not like where you can pick from an MPU and ICM. So if you want sensor fusion, this has sensor fusion into it. Uh, also, what we have is uh, basically has everything else, 3.3 volt OSD here. The ESC is not really anything special. It's just using a regular uh, F1 microcontroller unit. It's not even an F3, so it's nothing too crazy here. It's actually a BL Heli S ESC. No, it's a BL Heli 32. So, oh yeah, D Shot 1200. So it is a BL Heli 32. Uh, let's take a closer look at the boards now, actually. So, yeah, this is where it gets interesting. So, we see we have both gyros right here. They're talking over SPI, and we have our little boot button, USB. So, the Bluetooth is modular. Now, this is good and this is bad. I don't know if it'll power off once you arm, kind of like what SpeedyB does. Uh, what they've done here, basically, is they've given it 3.3 volts. I think these take 3.3 volts. So, they've connected the RX and TX from these modules, because these modules, you could find them anywhere. And they have a UART on there. And they just connect that to the UART of the microcontroller unit, but inside the board. So, you kind of think of it, they just soldered it there. And they've enabled MSP for it in the UARTs tab in Betafly. So, that's what's going on here. Uh, the, the, the ESC looks pretty good. We do we see have uh, some edge plating, which is really nice now. We have nice vias here, not too fat to where all the solder would just drop through. Uh, what else do we have? Filtration looks okay. Uh, this is what's typical now. We have some gummies on the ESC, and uh, the FETs look good size. Uh, so, But, I mean, that doesn't mean anything really what good size. I don't know what the hell, why the hell I even said that. Um, four tier, yeah. It's using just a typical overall layout, really. 3.3 volt regulator. Um, nothing too crazy. Current, battery. Still, we don't have current sensing for each ESC, which is kind of a shame, but it does give you pretty much everything you'll need. Uh, this is going to be a pretty simple build also, especially for newbies, because if you take a closer look here, we see we have pads and connectors. So this is really great. Uh, it has everything pre-made for you. So, for example, I can see one of these is the camera. Maybe this one would be the camera. Uh, video transmitter, this is going to be, going, I'm pretty sure this is for the video transmitter. This is going to be for the uh, receiver here. So everything here, you know, they provide you with everything you'll need, even low ESR capacitor, which is really nice. Uh, so it is a, a complete package. So that is to be expected nowadays with everything that's coming out. And if it doesn't do that, then, you know, you should think twice about getting whatever stack you're planning on getting. This is where it gets really interesting in my opinion here. Now, what we're looking at here is a kit from iFlight. Now, don't let this fool you. You might think it has everything, but it doesn't have everything. Now, it's a pretty attractive price, 160 bucks. I haven't really calculated against anything else really just yet, but 160 bucks, what do you get? You get four motors, you get a twin GFC. I think this is a sensor fusion flight controller. You still need ESCs. You don't get the ESCs. You get a nice frame from iFlight. They have really great frames. Some people don't like them. A lot of people like them, though. I personally like them. Uh, and they give you some of their propellers, which are the least efficient of every propeller I've ever tested. Um, but they're still good. I mean, I think they give you a good amount here. But I think this is wrong because it's saying 80 bucks for basically 12 props. So, yeah, this is wrong here. So just ignore that part right there. 
Um, but we get the kit, we get the, the, the motors, which you get the motors. What the hell is this saying? Normal price is $8. These are not $8. These are not the Shing E. There's, there's a really big mix up here. These are the little bit more expensive motors. If I know, if I remember correctly here, they're not the eco stack. These are not the eco motors. So these are good motors. Maybe they're just trying to get rid of the stock here, but, um, overall, this is really nice. It's really attractive. Even if you're planning on getting started, especially with the DJI FPV, this is a really great place to get started. However, I don't think this uh, flight controller gives nine volt. If I remember correctly, we're just going to double check that because the DJI FPV needs nine volts and nope, it doesn't. We can see battery voltage here. So you would basically fry the uh, the DJI unit. So you need an ESC with a nine volt regulator at least. And the latest one that would have that. So I, I also, okay, so the latest one that would actually have that would be the new T-Motor uh, Pro. It has a 10 volt. Uh, I, I don't really remember if the DJI FPV is capable up to 10 volts, but I think it is. I think it's around the eight volt mark. So yeah, double check that. We'll probably double check that later on in the video. But overall, this is a really great combo in my opinion, which I'll be definitely picking up one. However, they're releasing more budget line combos, which I also find pretty interesting now, this one. Now I recently got this flight controller. I still haven't built it. Um, but some people are saying they've been using it for quite a while. Some people, you know, it's just, you're going to find mixed emotion, mixed, you know, things everywhere. You know, you don't know the quality of this, but this is basically a five inch quadcopter, a uh, very old frame. So this is going to take full fledged cameras. Keep that in mind. Or you can buy a mini camera. You can buy a mini camera with an adapter. Fox users usually give those to you. Uh, so this is a five inch quadcopter with three BT motors, which I've never heard of before, but they're 2306, 2500 KV. Uh, with 30 amp ESCs, these are BL Heli 32, if I remember correctly, but we'll double check that down there. Yep, they are BL Heli 32, and you get an all-in-one flight controller. This is really nice, but you're still missing a couple things. What you're missing here is actually not much, just a camera, video transmitter, and a receiver, and obviously everything else you'll need to control it, but, you know, like maybe $30 more, $10 for XM+. Plus. Uh, you can get a good transmitter for 12 bucks, so that's $22, and a camera, usually a good one's around 30 bucks. Uh, so yeah, around 50 bucks. Around 50 bucks will have you set up here, so that's around 180 bucks for a full-fledged quadcopter, unless I'm missing something. Maybe an FPV antenna for the video transmitter, but you can get some with, uh, that come with some. So this is, in my opinion, also a great deal, but we have to see its performance. But for a basher budget quad, this is uh, really great, I think, until we test it. But the overall price, I mean, they're, they're really starting to think and go in the right direction, in my opinion. We still need some time, but overall it's pretty good. But you're not gonna be able to run 6S on this, so keep that in mind. This is not 6S, it'll be a 4S uh, build here. This was kind of interesting. Um, I just, it just looks interesting really more than anything to me. Uh, I really like the overall design of the, uh, copper here. It looks really nice. Filtration looks really good for a 20 by 20 ESC. And, uh, we see we have the connector broken out into solder points, which is also a huge plus. And you get a connector and they have glue on the connector, which is really nice. We have one dedicated shunt resistor to give us the current reading here. Um, let's see more specs of this. I think it has to be 6S capable. Are these F3s? Hmm, let's double check. I didn't really read that. Uh, let's see what it has. So, hmm, I don't think it's an F3. So there's not, a, I don't think it's an F3 ESC, but I could be wrong, but I highly doubt it. So, cause they would, you know, just put there like, oh, it's an F3 ESC. So it's not, it's 6S capable. So it's up to a 6S and um, it looks pretty nice. That's all I got to say until we test it. Hobbywing does do good stuff. It did fuck up in the past, but they're well known for most of their stuff. Now, this one is, I think, I think this is one of the first 20 by 20s for the DJI FPV unit. Now, I think this 20 by 20 even has a 9 volt regulator, uh, which I find to be pretty interesting. And I was right. Look at this, a 9 volt 2.5 amp regulator for the DJI FPV unit in a 20 by 20. And it's an F7, it's twin G ICM. So it's sensor fusion ICM gyro. That is insane. I have like, good job, really. It could take the, the, this is just the flight controller. It could take a maximum input of 8S. Now it has to take battery voltage because it needs to make nine volts. So it'll have to drop those down from something. So you can't give this five volts and expect the flight controller to work or at least a nine volt regulator to work. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really, that's really great actually. Now we're making steps in the right direction. And I think to be honest, DJI is going to be, 
Uh, it's going to be playing a big role in the future, uh, unlike the Bite Frost, in my opinion. Uh, this is my opinion, uh, but Fat Shark YouTube channel, don't get upset again, maybe? I don't know, it's up to you. But yeah, this is my opinion. I think if you want to go HD, you just go DJI. That's it, in my opinion. Price, kind of steep a little, maybe $35 would have been great. Uh, we also see that they're using an SMD flash memory. It even has 16 megabytes of flash memory. That's actually really nice, really nice. And look how easy it is to connect everything. Awesome. So yeah, that's pretty attractive in my opinion. Uh, here's the same thing, but a complete kit with the ESC. Let's take a look at the ESC here because I don't know what the ESC has. So and again, F7, which is really great. The sensor fusion, nine volt from the uh, flight controller. Here's the ESC. Uh, just normal F1 uh, microcontroller unit, it's not using F3, so it is a BL Heli 32, 2 to 6S, something you want, 40 amps, 45 amps, maybe a bit too much for that, but you know, this will handle all, most things possibly just fine. Usually these little ones have been handling really great. That is just a sick stack right there. Really nice, really thin profile, has everything, flash board, onboard memory, 9 volt regulator. Um, the, it, wait, wait, wait. So this is pretty interesting here. Usually these don't come with OSD and they save space there. Now to have OSD on there, that is really great because now you could take advantage of the nine volt for an analog system and also uh, just the DJI FPV system. Because when you think about it, what's going on here is sometimes let's just say for some reason you broke your DJI camera. So you would have to ground that whole quadcopter because there's no OSD because most of these come with no OSD because the DJI unit does the OSD. But here to have the OSD also in there is a huge plus. Wow, I think personally so far from the feature set, it's worth its money, but performance, iFly doesn't really disappoint. So, but I don't, USB-C? This even has USB-C, am I tripping or is that a USB-C? That is a USB-C, no, yeah. Wow, USB-C, this is an absolute game changer. So USB-C, OSD, 9 volt, DJI ready. You break your DJI, you can go analog and have a 9 volt. This is insane, coming soon, it's not even out yet. But maybe by the time I release this video, it'll be out. So I'll have everything here obviously linked down below. Uh, this is also pretty interesting. Now. You might be like, okay, well, so interesting. F7 20 by 20 stack. But look at the way they're actually mounting the gyro, or at least how I understand they're mounting the gyro. We now we know the video transmitter is great on this. So they made basically their own flight controller, their own ESC here, BL Holly 32, to be expected. Uh, probably just F1 microcontroller unit, totally fine. F7 flight controller here uh, for the ESC, yeah, okay. Micro USB, blah, blah, blah. Um, no 9 volt, that's fine. But what I wanted to show you is this. Now, I don't understand how they're connecting the gyro. Is the gyro in this thing here? Which I think that's what's going on because I don't know. I can't really figure this out. Or it's all suspended from this setup here. Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, never mind. I thought the gyro was somehow in that 3D plastic. It's not 3D printed, but that plastic silicone thingy. The UC looks pretty interesting. They have a really crazy design. I really like their designs here. Um, so the, the filtration looks somewhat minimal if you're going to be running some big mo five in you know, five inch quadcopter with a 6S setup. Uh, I could be wrong again, but those look pretty tiny to me. They're using pin headers. Not a lot of people like pins. Uh, some people do, some people don't. For me personally, I'm fine with it. Uh, let's see what you're using. F722. Great camera. So this looks really great really interesting pretty new so there's really nothing else i could say I'll, I'll probably be doing a build with this very soon but again i just wanted to check the price here 115 bucks for everything except the camera motors and frame is that right yeah that's right so camera motors and frame um you get a yeah that's under 200 bucks i think i think you can do a build with this under 200 dollars because it has a proper video transmitter also in it that's really great. I think that's really good in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, this is really nice that I'm seeing that they're releasing these little uh, kits here. Because now we're even, I'll, we'll be able to even make better budget quads. Um, not always super much better. But, you know, we, we, we could probably get prices down quite dramatically. Like that whole iFlight kit. I really like that. Um, 
this whole kit right here is really interesting but again i think it's kind of a poor choice with the flight controller because you need to take into consideration something to give nine volts or everybody's gonna have to start looking for those you know those little mini step down converters which uh, uh like a little voltage regulator which you could adjust the voltage to on and um you'll be able to do that just fine however those they're not really that stable because sometimes they let noise seep through so usually like um an LDO, but there isn't really that many LDOs that do that that, that great, actually. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is a really great kit so far. And um, I'm really curious to see what they're going to come up with next. And a lot of things are starting to come out. And let me know what you think of goggles. HDO2, HDO, Skyzone, or DJI, or Bite Frost. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. And again, everything here is linked down below. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll have the flight footage of my previous builds upcoming in the next couple days. And... I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.